to Weather Caught on Camera. I'm Mike Bettis. We all know Mother Nature can muster up some fierce weather, but you won't believe your eyes when you see what strong winds can do in this next dramatic video. It looks like a scene from an old Hollywood movie. High winds cause a bridge to warp and bend like it's made out of rubber, not steel. You look at the film of it now and it's like a Steven Spielberg special effects. But it is real, and amazingly, this decades-old event is all caught on camera. It's 1940, and the recently built Tacoma Narrows Bridge has quickly become a signature feature of the area. The third longest suspension span that became known as Galloping Gertie. It's jokingly called Galloping Gertie because traveling over it is like riding on a bucking Bronco. It doesn't take long for it to become a spotlight for spectators. Almost right away, um, people started to be attracted to the bridge. Not so much by the destination of getting across the bridge as the experience of traveling on the bridge. Low winds could move the steel, cable, and concrete structure in a wave-like motion. It undulated. And with a six-foot undulation in the bridge, it was possible for one car to be at the bottom of a six-foot undulation and another car to be at the top of a six-foot. And you would literally be looking uphill. And a moment later, that car would disappear over the top of the rise. Construction of the suspension bridge begins in the latter years of the Great Depression in 1938. It isn't long before workers suspect there's something seriously wrong. Almost immediately they noted as the wind picked up, as the velocity of the wind blowing through the narrows increased, um, the bridge had an inclination to want to rise and fall with the wind. And early on they kept thinking, you know, well, it'll get firmer as we finish it and we get the road paved and all those layers will be put down. There'll be more weight added, there'll be more stiffness to the bridge and it will tame this down. But Gertie never tames down. The undulation just gets worse. It was a little alarming for people standing on the bridge to be in a relatively lightweight wind of, say, 15, 20 miles an hour, to be rising and falling, you know, six, eight feet. Despite this, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge opens on July 1st, 1940, to much fanfare. And the governor and the congressman and everybody, you know, all the dignitaries were there. Uh, there was a parade of uh, expensive automobiles, Packards and Cadillacs and everything that um, they cut the ribbon and the stream of cars with dignitaries uh, went across the bridge. Everybody just marveled at this, really what was only a two-lane bridge, so very narrow um, span going across. It's quite the thing. The wind that kicks up in the narrows of Puget Sound is notoriously gusty, and on November 7, 1940, the velocity measures 42 miles per hour. At that point, the um, people at the toll booths realized that there was something totally wrong going on. And that morning, photographers and people rushed out to be able to watch it. It was just word spread all over town. One unlucky commuter gets caught on this wild ride with his poor dog in the back seat. They shut the bridge down, but he stopped in the middle of the bridge. I mean, the bridge was twisting. It was jumping up and down. He just didn't feel like he had control of the automobile got out of the car and ran off the bridge and left the car out there. Once he got off the bridge, everybody kind of stood back and the car began to kind of bounce around the center of the bridge. Remembering that his dog is in the back seat, he runs back to get him. Luckiest guy in the world that day because he got out to the car. Now the dog was completely panicked and bit him and wouldn't, wouldn't come to him. And he realized that at this point, the car was, I mean, bouncing so violently up and down that he, he was going to have to abandon it. No sooner did he get turned around and start to run back than the support, the vertical support cables began to pop. And he frantically ran as fast as he could and got back to the tower between. And uh, no sooner did he get back there than the entire center section, about 600 feet at the center of the bridge, failed entirely and the car went down with the center deck at that moment and um, that was lost. Galloping Gertie crashes into the waters beneath. The whole scene is caught on film, 
except for one key moment. Those photographers, for some reason, at the moment that the bridge actually failed, didn't have their cameras on. So that instant when the bridge actually does fail um, is not captured in movie film anywhere. But the images that were caught on camera give us a rich cinematic history of the momentous event. There were thousands of witnesses there that day, people that were there to watch it, many people with cameras, eight millimeter movie film in those days. A moment in time when the inventions of man can't beat Mother Nature. When you realize you're looking at a structure of that size and it's moving that violently as a result of, of wind forces going through there. It just is riveting. The images of the bridge collapse are so compelling and so dramatic that it's difficult to believe that it's not a clip from an old movie. It's hard not to just want to lock onto it in disbelief, really. Uh, I think that's what really grips you is the fact that this is crazy. This can't be uh, what's really happening. But it really did happen.